It's time for another Mega Mailbag with your host, the Deaf Palm. Now, without any further ado, here's your host, Scott. It is a Laura Gateway. Dragino. Look at that. Interesting. So, let's have a closer look at this, shall we? Is it, it's like a modular system, which is quite interesting. So we've got a EC25AU, which is for the local frequencies here, the 868 MHz. That's the actual Wi-Fi unit here. Then we've got these two modules here as well, which also plug in, which you've got antennas coming off. So these are the LoRa antennas. You can see there, LoRa 1, LoRa 2, and then antenna 3, which is the 4G antenna. All right, so that's the 4G module there. So it's actually got 4G capable, so you can just sell in network stuff. And then we have LAN and WAN ports as well. I'm not quite sure what the toggle button does. I guess that's just the reset. And 12 volts, 1 amp in. Indicator lights. But yeah, it's quite an uh, interesting system. It's like it's an adaptable thing that I just build it up as I need it and then sell it as is. So we've got an internal 4G antenna here and external 4G as well. So that's handy, I suppose. It's actually got three antenna ports. It's actually got one more to stand here. It's got some kind of Wi-Fi module under there. I can't quite see what it is. I don't want to pull it apart. It says wireless. So that'd be Wi-Fi antenna just here. That one right there. It's the Wi-Fi antenna from that module. So it's got Wi-Fi, 4G, Ethernet, and LoRa. So that was about $270 in New Zealand for this thing. Quite expensive, but I'm hoping it will solve some solutions and give me some ability to uh, expand my systems quite a bit. These are the parts it comes with. So this is the 4G antenna. Interesting shape one. Got two LoRa antennas apparently. The might as LoRa at least. Unfortunately, I don't have a VNA, so I can't actually test the frequencies of these things to see whether actually they are what they claim to be. You never quite know your antennas, you know, it might just be something off the shelf and I just happen to chuck it together because it looks about right. But I don't know, maybe these are Wi Fi antennas, maybe they're LoRa antennas, who knows. And it's got a power supply in here which has got the wrong plug on it. But oh well, it's only 12 volts, so it's not exactly a complicated thing. I've got plenty of them laying around. I've always got the death adapter option. Cool, so that'll be something I'll be playing with soon. Excellent. I should also specify the reason this is left open, oh, the case is warped, badly moulded, is that it's supposed to put a SIM card in here for the 4G. So there you go, there's a slot there. SIM card slot underneath that card there. So you put a, a SIM card in there and it uh, makes it wireless as well through 4G as a backup system. And there you go, it's the LG02 is the model number and this is A68 MHz, which is what I've chosen. All my LoRa stuff's going to be A68, probably. I've got a few different versions actually. So I think I can have 433 as well. So I've got to, I'm probably going to do parallel law networks something like that. I'll see where we go. Okay, nothing too exciting. Just a couple of 3.5 mil audio cables. But I'm actually using these for the interface for this project I'm working on. We use the 3.5 mil stereo jacks. So I've bought some little interface cables, only 50 centimeter cables. There'll be links for these things down below. Ah, solenoid valve, okay. Uh, this is not so exciting, but it's just a... So it should be 12 volt, hopefully. Yep, 12 volt, 6.5 watt. So it pulls out 540 milliamps, apparently. And it's operating, so it's just a control valve. So you've got a, I don't know, what's that? Half inch input, is it? Might be half inch, not sure. What does it say? Quarter inch? I don't think it's a quarter inch, though. That's not a quarter inch. Looks more like 3 eighths, actually. But that's fine. So the idea of this is I can run a water supply to it and have a sunlight control valve. So I'm going to put a PIR sensor, this thing here, and a water supply, and a like a spray kit, um, like an irrigation system to put onto the vegetable garden my wife's been making. And one of the cats keeps on going in there and finds a loose soil was really great for you know doing their business in. So not pleasant. So I have to keep covering it up and stuff like that and try and stop the cat getting in there. So I thought, well, if I put a motion activation water sprayer up there. Every time the cat jumps up, it will spray water. So that's part of that kit and that project we're going to make. Let's wait for the rest of it to turn up. Don't forget to check out the links down below for my stuff. These are keyboard covers for MacBooks. I have a few MacBooks which we use at events, and lots of people use them. You know, sometimes the weather's not best; it's you know a bit wet or whatever, or you don't quite know where their hands have been, kind of thing. So I've got some of these keyboard covers. So these go on the keyboard of the MacBook and help protect it. Maybe stop you know liquid spills or drops of water, that sort of stuff getting in there. There'll be links down below for these, so make sure you go and check those out. 
I've got, I think I've got a few different ones. I'm not quite sure. They're not actually marked about which one's which. Well, unless I've got a bunch of the same one, I really don't remember. You know, that's one I've got a MacBook. I thought I'd show you in case you care. You know, just sit so the keyboard like that, and it just means that you can still use it. Push the buttons, and it makes it a bit more resistant to liquid spills and that sort of stuff. It's a shame it doesn't go further out. Actually, if it's a bit wider, it'd go right to the edge there, form a bit more of a seal. But um, the main thing is it protects stuff from getting between the keys and keeps the dust and stuff out of it. So I suppose it looks alright, doesn't it? Did the job. Hmm, bonanza. Right. So we've got some little displays. These are like the same as the one I've already got, which I'll show you. Hold on. So this is my project I've been working on, and there's a display I've got. I've only got one of these displays, so I've got some more. Just checking the pinout. Yep, same pinout. Basically the same module, but it's silk screen marking looks slightly different, so it's probably made by somebody else. And little displays they have, they're really good for little projects. You can, just, you can see them quite well. They're really good, clear displays, but they're tiny, they're like 0.9 inch or something. It's 0.96 inch, so they're tiny little displays. Still, even though they're being small, they're actually quite easy to see. They're good for doing little projects and development work. And here are some SD card adapters. And these are use um, SPI to communicate. I wish I could find an I squared C version, but unfortunately, no luck with that. I've used one of these on a project too, so these are identical. So because I used one, I thought, well, I better get a few. I know I'm going to be using these in my project. So I stocked up on those, and it's got a few more displays just for little bits and pieces, so I've got them around. Ah, okay. Right, excellent. These are neural modules. Now, I bought some different ones. Got some antennas as well, so I've got some generic antennas with the mounts and stuff on them. I thought they'd be handy. These are supposed to be lower antennas. Yeah, 868 megahertz. You can see it on the back there. So, cool. It should be the right ones at least. These are not marked about which frequency they're on, but they're supposed to be, I think, these are all 868. A few different ones. Hold on, what do I get here? So, I've got 12 of these ones. They're all the same frequencies. None of them marked, but I think they're all the same. And then I've got three of these ones, which are a little bit different. I'm not quite sure what the difference was between them. These might be 433 megahertz, I'm guessing. These are arrived at least now, so I forgot to use the things. Excellent. Laura. So here's actually a list of what it came with. There you go, that's what it came with. So we got, um, but that's the module with the antenna pictured. So I'm a bit confused by the fact that it's shown twice in a way, but I'm guessing that means the antenna, that means the module. SX 1276 modules is what it's actually using. So that's what I'm hoping to use as these things. If I have six of them, it means I can actually do six pairs. But I've also got the gateway, which I've also showed you, so I'm hoping I can interface with that as well. But I'm worried about getting collisions on a dialer. So two channels, which is a gateway has, may not be enough. Um, we'll see. But I am actually can always do six independent channels with these modules, hopefully. Set them up so they're all running parallel and go through some kind of network port or some kind of device to convert them. Maybe a bunch of ESP32s or something to put them on the network. I, I don't know how to figure that out. But anyway, a lot to do yet. A couple of Arduino Mega 2560s. So these are the big Arduinos with all the I.O., heaps of serial and everything as well on it. These are my fallback position. If I couldn't get the ears to work properly or to do what I wanted, I've got these. So I could always use these instead. Obviously they're significantly bigger, but it's still an option to do it. We'll see how we go, but hopefully I actually don't need to go there. Because you can always get like a wireless shield on it or something like that. Ethernet network, you know, that sort of stuff. I think the SP32 will do what I want. That's what I've been developing anyway. Double bagged. Not particularly exciting, but uh, I'll show you what these are. As you can see, I've got six of them. Roll up waterproof keyboards. That's the main benefit of these. So, the idea of this is they can at least uh, take some wetting and stuff like that in the elements. Obviously, this end can't, but this end can. We might need to do data entry where there's potentially water around, or rain, I should say. And these should be able to stand it rather than stand the keyboard. So, I hope you found it interesting, mate. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon. Otherwise, you don't get notified. Always click the bell icon. Just, just go do it. Click it. And I'll see you next one. Hope you enjoyed the Railbag video. And um, you'll see my project with Laura at some point. I'll be doing that and um, I'll show you what I did to build it and the hiccups and problems I had. I've got a working system right now, but I've still got to do the Laura stuff, and that's all part of that as well. So I'll be doing videos and later on. So make sure you check that out. Subscribe if you want to see that. So, catch you later. Bye. Time for another mega mail, but oh, f now, guys.
say. <laughs> I'm going to have to be walking in and out of this door as well. Yeah, that's right. I'll be stopping and starting a lot. Time for another make. Oh. <laughs>